Hello everyone, Dafty with you. In today's video, I figured it would be worth it if we finish off the final fire scenario using the APU. The APU has its own fire protection features, but unlike the engine, it only has one squib. Now the A32NX did have its APU function remodeled, but the only thing that's not scripted is the APU fire in the air. If I trigger the APU, it will display an EK message as if I'm on the ground. We'll work around it and you'll see another screen that shows us correct EK message display. So the only thing I could set off the APU fire warning is by using the test function in the overhead. Now it's important to know the consequences of actually setting off the fire protection and how it will affect your flight. When you press the fire push button, an electrical signal is sent to the APU that triggers 6 actions. The APU will shut down. The alarm warning that you hear or the repetitive chime will be silenced, which isn't actually modeled in the A32NX, but in the real aircraft it silences the alarm. The squib bottle is armed. It will close the low pressure fuel valve, shuts off the APU fuel pump, and closes the APU bleed valve, making the APU unusable for the duration of the flight. No electrical and pneumatic sources can be used once the APU is shut down via the fire protection panel. Once the signal is sent, a 10 second countdown will start that gives the APU time to shut down and allow the end speed and EGT to decrease so that the squib agents become effective once they're discharged. All three fire protections have a red guard. If you decide that it's necessary to shut down any of the three equipments, you will lift the red guard and push the fire push button. You would press the test button on the ground during your cockpit preparation to make sure it's functioning. But for simplicity, I'll use it to simulate an APU fire. As you can see in the EK message that is displaying to you the required actions that should be done on the ground and not in the air. This is what I was referring to when I said that the APU is scripted for in-flight APU fires. Now we'll simulate an APU fire. Once you hear the repetitive chiming, use the top right screen as a reference. The one that's in the middle is incorrect, so APU fire, you're going to go directly to overhead on the APU fire push button. You're going to push it and wait for a 10 second countdown. So lift the guard and push the middle push button, wait for 10 seconds. Once 10 seconds has expired, you can discharge the squib. And by that time, the fire should be put out and then the light will extinguish. Let's just assume that you forgot that you uh, set off the fire protection panel and then you start the APU. You'll see this ECAM message telling you to turn the master switch to the off position APU. And there's a fault light in the overhead too. Lastly, there's a very neat function of, from the APU. It's not modeled once again the A32NX, but it does. It actually does this in actual aircraft is that if the system detects an APU fire while on the ground, like for example you're doing a pre-flight or taxiing, it will shut down automatically without the need of any pilot interaction or going over looking at the overhead and manually pushing the push button. So it will just shut down the APU automatically and discharge the agents. And if you look at the lower ECAM system display page, you'll notice the APU is in an inoperative list. And that'll be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Take care.